Hello everybody and welcome to my studio today. My name is Alana and if you've come to my YouTube channel, you've come to paint with acrylics today. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to do a mixed media project and we're going to be painting Christmas ornaments. So my first one that I want to show you, get it on the shot here, is uh, my Noel ornament. And um, I've already varnished this one, so it's got quite a shine on it, but this one was really fun to make. Now, every one of these ornaments is completely covered with scrapbook paper before we even start painting. So all we see of the scrapbook on this one is the bow and the little bit down here. And this is my squatty oval ornament from my website. And so that's the first one we're going to be painting. The next one we're going to be painting is my um, vintage snowman. I wanted this ornament to look more vintage. So um, I chose a scrapbooking paper that had a crackle in the background and I stamped on top of the scrapbooking paper and then painted the snowman on. This has a very flat varnish on it, so it has no shine whatsoever, so I could keep that vintage look and feel to uh, this ornament. The um, part of the scrapbooking paper that we see in the design is going to be the scarf, the ribbon on the hat, and of course the bow on the ornament itself. And uh, I really loved this one, painting this little vintage ornament. It was so much fun. So that's the next one that we will be painting. The second one, we'll be painting three. And the third one is going to be this one. This is my uh, country ornament, and um, the scrapbooking part of this one is just the background. Everything else is painted on top of the uh, paper. So that's how we incorporated the paper into this one, by using it as the background instead of as part of the main uh, design like I did on the other two but still a super fun project to do and um, these will make great ornaments to give out or gift tags for your gifts. Um, I think that is a really cute idea. You can uh, put a message on the back um, or do the back just exactly like the front. It can be a dual sided ornament but uh, I always like to leave a message and put the year on it that I uh, painted the ornament and give that out. But those are the three ornaments that we are going to be painting in this mixed media project. So if everyone is ready, let's grab our supplies and let's start painting. Okay, I'm going to show you how I decoupage my surfaces. So you're going to want to start out with your wood surface and um, you want to apply a coat of multi-purpose sealer. I'm just going to squirt a little bit on both of these, which will be more than I probably need on this little one especially. And I'm going to spread it around, get a nice coat on here, take some of that and put it over here. You don't have to squirt it on like I did. That was just a, you know, when you're doing a lot at once, you probably want to put some out on your palette, but I'm just having a couple here, so I just squirted some out. Multi-purpose sealer helps prepare the wood, helps the paint or whatever you're going to put on it stick to it and not soak down into the wood. So we don't want our decoupage medium to soak down into the wood. We want it <clears throat> to be where it will just stick to the wood and then the paper will stick to it. So um, we want to multi-purpose sealer it first. And I did get a little bit more than I needed here. I'm gonna wipe my brush out and smooth this out a little bit. And we're going to let that dry. Get it out of the little holes there. I'm going to let that dry. Um, and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to paint my edges. I'm going to show you how I paint my edges and get those ready for when I stick the paper on here. Okay, these are pretty dry. Now, how I do my edges, because I like to have my edges pre painted before I put my paper on. Um, and you can paint the edge uh, corresponding color that goes with whatever paper you're putting on or whatever design you're putting on. It's up to you. 
um, but I want my edges to be black. So I'm just going to take a sponge with a little bit of black paint on it and paint the edges. Super fast way to do it. And I'm going to bring the paint in just a little bit onto the surface. Now, this is only if when I cut my paper, if I'm cutting out the shape of the paper, which I am on this one, in case it is too short, and I know I have black in my paper, this will take care of that edge and I don't have to worry about it. So this one I'm just going to quickly paint the edge with my black paint and my sponge. It's super fast and then you can lightly sand. If you need a second coat, let it dry. If you need a second coat, apply a second coat. Okay, and the back, usually I don't paint the back. I leave it in case I want to do a, a second design. Say I want a winter design on this side. I leave the back and then if I want like a fall or a spring design, I can paint the back and then I have a surface that I can get two designs out of. Okay, now when it comes to decoupaging, um, you have two different ways to get your paper the size that you need. One is to just cut out a piece larger than your surface. You know you've got a plenty of room for it to fit on there. And the other is to trace the design on the back of the paper and then cut out this design just on the outside of that line that you drew. This will make the paper just slightly bigger than your surface and you will still have to trim a little bit of it off but if you go right on that line or to the inside which you can go right on it if you if you prefer to uh, try getting it as close without trimming as possible um, but uh, if you go inside of it it will definitely be too small and then you have your shape here to put on See, it doesn't quite fit like it should. Probably because I drew it this way, so it should technically go on this side of the design. So I might quickly decoupage this side, or uh, multi purpose seal this side, and put a little bit of black. I don't think I'm going to need the black, but I think I'll put a little bit of decoupage, or multi purpose sealer on there to seal this one real quick. Because I drew the pattern on a certain way, then you should probably put an X on your surface with a chalk pencil or any kind of pencil. Just put an X on there and um, then you know which side the paper needs to go on. I should have done that, but I didn't. I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of black. I probably don't really need this, but I like to be safe and make sure. And you can mix this in with your multi-purpose sealer, but since I'm just using a little bit, I didn't want the whole thing to be black. Okay, so I'll let that one dry. Okay, now for this other one, so I just cut a large piece of paper that will definitely fit this surface, okay? So it definitely has to go that direction. So uh, how to apply your decoupage medium. First let's talk decoupage medium. So you want a matte decoupage medium, something that doesn't have any kind of gloss or sheen because we're going to apply it to both sides of our paper. And if we have anything that's got any kind of shine in it, it could cause the paint to resist just a little bit and not go on as nicely as we want it to. I like the napkin one. They used to have one that was paper. Uh, I don't think they have that one anymore, but they do have the napkin one and I like it a lot. Or the matte one. These are my two favorite ones I use all the time. I probably have more of this one than I do this one. So we are going to apply this. Now, there is two ways to apply your decoupage medium. Actually, there's three. 
you can apply it with a damp sponge. But when you apply it with a damp sponge, you want to dump some out on your plate. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump some out. Ooh, or dump a lot out. That was a lot. And use your sponge. Get quite a good amount on your sponge and cover your whole entire surface with a generous amount. You don't want it dripping over the edges, but you want it a generous amount all over the whole thing. I'm not going to show you with a sponge because a sponge is really easy. You just load it up well and smear it on. Flip your paper over, load the sponge up really well, a lot of decoupage on the paper, glue it down. Okay, so I'm going to show you with a two inch damp foam roller. This is my favorite way to apply it is with this. First of all, it goes on very fast and it gets you a nice even coat on there very quickly. You coat the paper both sides, you're done. I'm going to show you this one, how to do it with a paintbrush. So on this one here, I'm going to load up my two inch foam roller with a good amount of this decoupage medium. Okay, and then I'm just going to put it right here. I'm not pushing really hard, but I'm letting a good amount, I do have a lot of decoupage in my roller. I think I'm gonna get an even a little bit more. I really want a good amount of decoupage on here. Okay, we want this to start tacking up just slightly, so I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to bring my paper over, lay this on top here, and I'm going to put a good coat on the back side of my paper. And we want to get it on there good because we don't know exactly where our... Um, it's going to hit on our surface, so we want to cover pretty much all of the paper. Okay, then we can bring our surface back over, and I'm going to find the top and kind of line up my squares where I want them to go, and I'm going to lay it down, press the top. You don't have any time, a lot of time to move this. Once you start pressing it down, it is going to stick together. So don't spend a lot of time trying to adjust, and especially when you cut out the actual shape, you want to take time to adjust, and you're not going to have, you know, once you stick it down, it's down. And then I apply a coat on the top very quickly, and you might get some bubbles in here, but they should disappear after it dries. I have never ever had bubbles stay in my, my project. I'm going to use my palette knife and go around and release the paper in case it's stuck to my surface. And then this is good to go. We want to set it aside. I usually set it somewhere on top of something like a, a bottle of decoupage. I will just take it and set it. I'm, I'm just going around the edges make sure they're still stuck down after I lift, lifted the paper. I will set it on a bottle of decoupage and let it dry completely and then we will trim it. It only takes about 15 to 20 minutes to dry. Okay, so this one I'm going to use a paintbrush on instead of using my... Uh, I'm going to put that in my water real quick. My two inch foam roller. I don't want that glue drying in there. So I'm going to stick it in my water. Okay, so for this one I'm just going to paint it on. So again, because this is a smaller surface and if I don't want to get my foam roller out, I'm not going to. So I'm laying it kind of flat and, and you really want to make sure your edges are coated good. That's where the paper will lift. And if it does lift, we can fix that. But we don't want so much on the edges that when we push the paper down, it oozes out from underneath. If it does, you need to be ready to clean the uh... all right I'm gonna move this one out of the way and I'm gonna apply some decoupage onto the back of the paper another way to well I was gonna say another way to make sure you get it on right it depends on your 
what you're doing like my star one if you do uh, do it on a star surface you, you have to make sure you mark the center hole for the proper arm on the star that has the hole in it okay I'm going to pick this up bring this over and then this when you cut it out to fit it this is where you have to be careful you have to lay it down but not push it down that way it gives you a little bit of time to adjust it and move it if you need to. But once it starts sticking, you just got to leave it where it's at. So I didn't quite get it lined up on that edge, but that's okay. It's not going to matter because I'll be painting the topper anyway. So I'm just going to push it down really well with my hand. I'm going to lift it up real quick so you can see we still have some paper that is over the edge. Um, one thing that you do not want is glue oozing off of the edge so if you have some just very gently clean that up it will make it hard to trim the paper later um, so if you get any glue oozing off of the edges even that big one I should have checked it you don't want any glue on it okay so now we're gonna put glue on the top or decoupage on the top A good good amount and needs to be a matte decoupage. It cannot be anything shiny. So when it dries it needs to be matte because that's going to make it where we can paint on top of it easily. Now I have a couple of bubbles in here but they should disappear when this dries. I should not have, I have never had any bubbles stay in mine. Um, but if they do all you have to do is take a, a little straight pin and just poke a hole in that bubble. Take some of the decoupage on your finger and rub it where that hole is and it will push the glue into that hole and you can flatten that little bubble out. But I've never had one that has stayed in my paper. Okay, so that's how we get our decoupage. That's how we decoupage our paper onto our surface. That feels like it might lift, so I'm going to give that a little push. Maybe go around the edges if it's not super tacky, because if it's tacky, you'll pull the paper off and give it a little push on the edge. I like the roller because the roller, I can really push it on the edges and hopefully get good adhesion. If you don't get good adhesion, um, when it is dry, we'll have to come back and get some glue underneath the edges and repress it down. So let's get those dry and then we can start our design. Okay, this one is dry enough for me to remove the excess paper. So you want to get yourself a self-healing cutting mat. And you can give yourself some relief cuts here. Now I am using a very thin blade. This is a retractable blade, but it has these lines on it so you can break the tip off when it gets um, a little dull on the tip and it, it's not cutting your paper well. It won't cut your paper well if your paper is still slightly damp or wet. So what you do is you take your pliers and right where that line is, I usually push the line out to where it's right out here past the end. I put my pliers right next to that line. So let's see if I can get... Let me zoom in because it might show better if I zoom in. So there is the line. I'm going to put my pliers right on that line and then I will just bend it a little bit and it will snap it. I don't like for it to be out very far because it might snap two off. So just one out past the end here should be good enough. And then you'll put your pliers right next to that line. Squeeze, bend, and it will snap it off. I just broke one off or I would show you how to do it. So let me zoom back out. And so I'm just cutting some relief places in my paper so that I'm not cutting so much off at one time. Okay, and I like for my blade to be out just a little bit. I'm going to put my, my blade right next to my surface here. Okay, I'm going to slightly tilt it out 
that will hopefully help me cut the paper and not the wood and get a little tug and see where it's not quite cut and then it should release very nicely okay so you'll want to do this all the way around right next to it slightly angled out away from the surface we don't want it laying down like this because that will be cutting into it but we do want it slightly angled at least I found that's the easiest way for me to cut it without tearing the paper or cutting into the surface sometimes on smaller areas I still get into the surface a little bit but your paper has to be dry if you try to do this while it's still even slightly wet or damp you're just going to shred your paper. You're just going to tear it and you know, really mess up the edges. Okay, so that's got all the paper. Now we need to cut this hole here. go. wasn't rounded at the top. So now this hole here needs to be cut. So I'm going to give it a little press right there so I can see where it's at. And I'm just going to cut it a little X in it. If it's a smaller hole, um, you can just use a toothpick or something. I'm going to push that paper down in there. Now this is the one area that you can do before for your paper dries. You can tear this and push it and burnish it in there and that way it will stick to the inside. You can see mine's not sticking so I'm going to grab a little bit of decoupage because it will be pretty much impossible to cut that circle out and I'm just going to put some decoupage in here with a small brush. And then I'm going to try and burnish it with my paintbrush handle and get it to stick good to the wood here. Just push it against it, hold it against it until it stays and then when it dries it should be stuck. Okay. You don't need a ton of glue to do that, just a little bit on the paper. And that piece lifted right there. Try and pull that through there. Okay. Oops, I must not have enough glue on that one it just keeps lifting right off. I, mean, I think I'll take a little bit of glue and stick it on the inside on the paper. There we go. Now that's got it all burnished and tucked in there nicely. But that is one thing that you can do when the paper is about halfway dry. So when it's been drying for about five or six minutes you can go ahead and cut your hole and poke it through or if you're doing a smaller ornament like this one this other one that we did you can um, let me get my poking tool here you can go ahead while it's wet usually I try to push down on the paper and find where the hole is and then I just push my pokey tool in there and kind of burnish it around and get it down inside the hole. So that is how we get our paper adhered and cut on a self-healing mat with a very sharp blade. Do not use anything dull or anything with a fat cutting blade because you will not be happy. So these two are ready for me to start painting on now. 
So I'm going to set them aside because I already have another one that we're going to be painting on. So let me grab it and my paints and we'll get going. Okay, I have this. This is the surface I'm going to paint on and I've got it all uh, trimmed up and everything. If you're wanting to know what surface this is, this is my squatty oval ornament that I sell on my website. Um, I'll give you the measurements. It is seven inches wide by six and a quarter inches tall. So it's a decent size uh, ornament. So I've already transferred on my line drawing. Um, this is my line drawing to start out with. Now I design as I paint my surface. So even though there's nothing on here now but the bow, as I develop the design that will be put on the line drawing. But for now, I only have my bow transferred on here. And I use, it's on tracing paper and you can, you can transfer it onto vellum. And then I just use my gray graphite to transfer my lines on. Super easy. So now we want to start painting this in. Now Buffalo Check is the big rage. It has been for a couple of years for Christmas ornaments. I do love a very beautiful black and white Buffalo Check or a red and black Buffalo Check. They are some of my favorite colors. These are not the colors that I decorate with Christmas, but I do love to paint them. So I do have a Buffalo Check stencil on my website and I could have used it, but it's a half inch Buffalo Check. And I felt like it would have been too big. So when I found this paper, I thought it was perfect for a buffalo check ribbon. It's about 3 eighths of an inch wide, and I think it's going to work beautifully. So the, the paper is going to become our bow, okay? It's also going to become this section down here. So we're going to paint in the topper and the bell and around the bow. So around the bow, we're going to paint with some black. Now we put the decoupage medium on here, so we should be able to paint very easily on this surface. So we just want to fill in all of our negative space here. with lamp black and it will probably take two coats around the bow and then there is the ribbon right there go right up to your lines and try and cover those lines a little bit see how nicely this is painting right on this paper because we put that decoupage on here we don't have to worry about the paper starting to buckle or um, you know getting rough you know starting to deteriorate or anything this is going to keep the decoupage is going to keep that from happening so <clears throat> we're going to paint all of our sections that need to be black And, you know, it may not cover completely the first time. I had a big old drop of water there, so it's lifting the paint. And we're going to paint above the bow here. Just follow your line. Got a little bit too far in there. Okay, we have our topper here, so we want to go up to that line. I don't think it was quite that far down on my bow there that it should have went. Yep, that looks better. Okay, then we have a couple of teeny tiny areas down here at the bottom. Now, like I said, you're going to have to apply... Oh, I missed, missed some spaces, but I'm going to grab my smaller brush here. I'm going to grab a, a round brush. We've got a couple of small places over here that need to be black. 
one on this side. I can see my line. There it is. So it's really easiest if you can outline your shape there and then just fill it in. And then down here, my bell, we've got a couple of places. Let me just zoom in because it's going to be too hard for me to hold this up in the air. We have a couple places on each side of this bell that we want to be black. So we want to form the shape of this bell. So that gives a little bit more roundness to our bell right there. Okay, so that's our black areas. Okay, so now we want to paint in our gray areas that will become silver later. Uh, we're going to use gray sky and let each one of these coats dry and then we will paint them in a second coat. So we want to get our topper it gray sky. I like to use um, scrapbooking paper to become part of my design. Um, it makes a great background. You can find so many awesome papers that make great backgrounds. And I don't know if I mentioned, but my papers I normally get from Hobby Lobby. Um, I have a few that I've gotten from Michaels over the years. I don't buy scrapbook paper very often, so if I bought any recently, which I did just purchase this one just a few days ago, and today is October 10th, 2020, I purchased this like two days ago, um, then this is a pretty current paper, and I think Buffalo Check will be pretty current for a little while. So, and they had it in black and white, they had it in black and red, they had actually two different sizes in the black and red, and um, I don't know if they had any other colors because those were really the only colors I was looking for. So now I'm going to let all this dry and go apply two more coats on here. And we're going to come back and start painting on this and adding some detail. And we're going to use something besides a paintbrush in order to paint this design. Okay, I've got all my second coats on and they're dry. I've decided to add a word down here, Noel. Now you could add, if you're going to use this as a gift tag for a large package that they can then use as an ornament, you can change that and print out someone's name and trace it and put it on there. Totally up to you. I always like to do the back and paint the back up and put like Merry Christmas 2020 from Lana Lamb, you know, or whatever. Um, but don't don't just paint the side. Make sure you do something fun to the back side. You know, paint it the solid color. Put some snowflakes on it. Something. Do something to the back to make it ornamental on both sides. So we're gonna. Um, I think we'll first paint in a quick coat on our uh, topper and our bell down here with this extreme sheen. If you don't have this, you can use the metallic silver. Um, any kind of silver or metallic paint will do, or you do not have to paint it metallic at all. Totally up to you. Um, whatever you want to do. I mean, you can do all the shading and highlighting that we're going to do just right on the gray, and it will be just fine. But if you're going to do that, you want to make sure you put uh, probably three coats of gray, maybe, to cover up the um, paper well. Just two coats is all you need if you're going to add the silver on there because uh, the silver's pretty opaque and it will not opaque enough, I don't think, to cover up that paper. But it's got some nice coverage. This Extreme Sheens has a really nice, good coverage. Okay, so now we're going to take our black. Um, and start adding some shading on our uh, bow here. So let me grab my angle 
brush that I just had. This is a 3 8 inch angle brush. You can use a half inch would be just fine. Whatever size you want to use. Okay, so I've got my spritzing bottle. I'm going to spritz the edge of my palette over here with some clean water. This is the water I use when I'm floating or I need a drop of water to thin my paint down. I don't worry too much about, um, you know, my, my water basin. Um, I especially don't want to go into my water basin when I'm floating because that uh, dirties up my brush and um, makes the water edge no longer just water. It's tinted. It's water with paint in it, so it's basically tinted. Okay, so we want to go underneath. Let me grab a little bit more water here underneath our openings and shade them. This is just a soft float of lamp black. Don't let it get too carried away. We will darken all of this stuff. We want to start out light to see where we need to go. If we start out too dark, we don't have any place to go. Okay. Very sheer. Lots of water in my brush here. We're going to go around the center knot. We're going to separate the loops from the ribbon. And you can go right on into the background when you do that because I might give this bow a little bit of the water in my brush here. A little bit of a bump in, or it's kind of folded there on the end. That's even going to show up. It might not show up till we do a highlight here. And this side, we won't be able to see it on this side. It's going to be next to black too much, so I might just make this side the same. Don't worry about that little bump out thing. Never the mind. Okay, let's put some. This is a this is very sheer. Lots of water. Blending it with my paint, but it's still only loaded on that one edge. Okay, don't don't let it get too drastic. Okay. I want to shade on the knot, and I think I'm going to shade on the edges here. And we'll highlight on the top and bottom, maybe. These are pretty soft floats. Don't let them get crazy. Let's put some wrinkles. I'm just going to take the chisel edge of my brush and do the wrinkles right there and we'll do maybe three on this side just make it different Okay. reloading my brush here everything should be getting pretty dry I want to go out here on this edge this edge so we're starting to develop the form of our bow more Okay, so I can tell that right here, this needs a lot more. So I'm going to go over it again. Tap it down with my finger just a little bit. You can use a mop brush. Do not be afraid to use your fingers to paint. Just darken that a little bit. We definitely want to darken inside the loops. This one. Okay. I'm going to do more on this knot, but I want to bring it in into the knot a little bit. So 
So just walk it in. You got water on your your brush, so it should be an easy thing to walk it in. I don't think it was quite enough paint, so let me do a little bit more. It's hard when you're painting black on top of black to get the dimension always that you want. So we'll go back along this side. Along this side. Okay, I need to do inside this one loop over here again. This one's not quite dark enough. Make sure the layer that you just painted in there is dry, because if it's not, then um, you're not going to be very happy. I'm going to put a little bit of shading right here on each side, up at the top, and a little bit on my corners. that out. This corner we won't see a whole lot of. Okay, let me do my wrinkles here again. Chisel edge, pull it out, chisel edge, pull it out, chisel edge, just stroke it out, just the very tippy toe of this brush. Let's put maybe a few in here. I don't want them to connect. Add a couple of wrinkles in there. They can be coming from the top or from the sides. Um, your choice, and you can also have some little puckers coming from out here. So let me grab some white and we'll start adding some highlights on here. And brightening up. This is looking so cute already. Okay, our white, we're going to add some highlights on here. Okay, I want to go a little bit along this edge right here. Not in my shadow area. I'll have to do this a couple of times. White is very notorious for fading into a project. I'm going to touch all this back with my finger because I don't want it to be crazy super bright to begin with. I'm not even sure I'm going to be 100% happy with this white on here. Okay, I want a little bit down here. Just a thin line. Okay, and I'm not liking that on there at all. So, I'm going to dampen that. Grab my white eraser. Very gently erase that. It hadn't cured. It was still pretty wet. And just remove that. I wasn't liking that at all on there. You can only do that if your paint has not cured. So, okay. Let me at least try to get some highlights on these things here. Ooh, it's bright. That was too wide. here we can add some I'm not really sure I'm liking 
those wrinkles in there. I really don't like the top ones. The bottom ones aren't so bad, but the top ones. Now, I can do this because the paint hasn't cured, but if your paint has sat on here very long, do not do this because you will start getting into the paper. You'll go straight through the glue. And I'm getting close to going through the glue right now. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. All right. I'm going to load this just like I loaded my black with a washi white. And we're going to come across it like this and like this and create a shine on here. We don't want it down here. Straight down all the way. I'm just going to flip it over and go right beside it. This is a back to back float. And that's just the first time that we're going to do it. And you can put a back to back float on the side over here. of the ribbon a little bit of shine. We want this to look like satin ribbon. And then we'll go across the center and we'll get some shine on it as well from edge to edge. Don't stop. Don't stop. go over that a second time. It should be dry. It should dry fairly quickly. And this one I'm definitely going to mop. Soften that line in the center there. Definitely need more water. And soften. And go along this edge. Very tippy toe of the brush. Straight paint here. And then down here, we're going to do a little bit of back-to-back. -back. I'm going to wipe some of that off and grab some water. A little bit of back-to-back. -back. Give it a little bit of shine here and let it kind of fade away. We'll definitely repeat that. So we'll go over to this one. And back-to-back -to -back down here. Where it's getting some of the, the light on it as well. Repeat this back to back. Mop brush. Repeat this one. Mop it. do this again here a little bit along the edge Ooh, or a lot along the edge there along that edge it's much easier if you can pull towards yourself I'm going to have to go 
go back in with a little bit of shading here with my black where I kind of got out of lines a little bit make sure we can see all of our floats needs to be a little bit brighter and it really needs to be lined up that one and then this one over here now I'm just on the very tip of this brush but you can actually go down to a small round or a um, detail liner. I think that looks pretty good for our bow. Okay, let's um, let's go work on the topper and the bow. Okay, I think I want to add just a quick little liner detail of bright white, especially to here, here. I think that's going to settle everything in there nicely. Alright, now for our topper up here, first I want to draw some lines on here. So I'm going to use my charcoal pencil because I think it's the one thing you'll be able to see the best. And um, this is actually a round part. And then this comes across. So we might paint that area in black. So you can decide what you want the lower part of your topper to be. Maybe some lines on it like that would be cute. And then down here on the bell, we really just need to see a little bit of the, um, the holes that are in the bell. So we just need to put a little bit of that on there. So let's grab a small round in our black paint. And we're going to push and just drag it. A little bit of a teardrop right there on the bell. And then up here, we'll define the circle. I'll just paint this part, this negative part, black. Take a look at it and see if it's looking like a circle. Okay, this is not quite even across here, so I think I'm going to try and even it a little bit. Let's go up. That looks a little, little bit better. Okay, let's shade on our topper and our bell. 
We're going to shade with black. We're going to shade here next to this checked space. We need to shade on our checked area as well. And I'm going to bring it down, so I'm going to walk it down onto the bell. Just pity pat, tap, tap. Grab my mop brush and settle that down in there. If you've got a lot of water, let it dry just a second or two. Let some of that water start evaporating, otherwise you'll remove your paint. Okay, and on this we're going to shade on the outside edges. Outside edges. We're going to shade on this on the lower part, and I'm going to walk it up. Mop, mop, mop. Settle it in there. I'm going to take the toe of this brush and make these lines coming down. A little bit more water. And create those coming down. And I'm going to shade on this side of the circle because I want to highlight on the top. We can add some shading along the outside edges as well. I'm just going to use my finger to settle that down in there. I'm going to come down here on this checked area and shade on the outer edges a bit. We're still just using lamp black. here. It's really not taking it. There we go. Outer edge. Okay, well, that area I did the outer edges. While I'm here I'll put another coat on my bell because it should be good and dry. Pity pat, walk it down. Pity pat, pity pat, pity pat, pity pat. And then mop brush. Mop, mop, mop. Very gently. Very, very softly. Okay. Go back up to the topper. And I want to shade here again. And here. And mop, mop, mop. I don't want to see any white here. Okay. All right. I think these things here are pretty good. You can do it another one over them if they need it, but I think they're pretty good. And then our bell down here. Shading on the outside if I can, and then down at the center. Just the very center down here. And we'll highlight the rest of it. And we'll highlight up here. Okay, we're going to highlight with some white. So I'm not going to have much water in my brush. Still feel like I got too much. the outer edge out here on this and the underneath here. Then we're going to do it on the opposite side of each one of these. Okay, we need to let that dry. We're going to repeat all of that. Okay, then down here on the bell. We're going to shade or highlight around our I just covered up that shading down there. Okay, 
I think I lost. I lost a little bit of that one. So. Doesn't quite look right. Yeah, neither one of them kind of look right. They look way too big. some of that off. And we'll take our white back. I'll just walk this highlight up. So shading down in the center bottom probably not where we want to go. But we do want to shade out here. And we'll just keep the highlight right down there. Okay, well I have this black on my brush here. I'm going to shade underneath this. Ooh, baby. Lots of water on there. Get rid of some of that. That was like a bath of water. Good gracious. I'm going to float along the bottom here with some black, all the way straight across. We're going to get our white and brighten our highlights now, up here at the top, down here, Whew, that's big. Okay, we're going to go in here again. So I was on this side. We're going to go across the top there in just a minute. I want to highlight on this edge. Just a little bit, and then we'll come back down here and highlight some more. Give this bell some, some shine. Now you can make a thin wash of the metallic because when we put this acrylic on top of it it kind of took the metallic look away so let me put some metallic out here and I will make a wash of it and put it on the gray areas first let me highlight Get all the water out of my brush Is highlighted on the top of each one of those. Okay, metallic paint. We're just gonna thin it down with some clean water, make it a wash of color, and we'll just wash this over metallic areas. We don't want to lose our colors that we have in here. So we want to make sure it's just a wash of color. I'm going to kind of spread it out with my finger. up my black areas here because they got metallic in them and we don't want these areas to be metallic. Okay, same thing down here. We don't want these negative areas to be metallic. This is like dead space here.
Okay, there's our bell. There's our topper. Easy peasy. Okay, so now I want to add a little bit of color to this besides just black and white and gray. Let's add some fun colors to it. Okay, as I was looking back at this, I really like the black and the white only on here. Totally up to you. I'm going to do my lettering with a uh, fine tipped, I think it's an ultra fine tip, Posca pen. Uh, this is acrylic paint. It's got a fine point tip on it. And these can spatter if they get caught anywhere, so I'm trying not to push super hard. I'm just going to outline my letter and then fill it in. So just go into the fat parts and fill it in with this pen. fast easy way to get your lettering on here and depending on the background how far it fades down in there you might have to do this a couple of times so we got no L on there easy crazy easy no L okay and you can put any name that you want to on there. Now, you can add some snowflakes in the background. I have a snowflake stencil. I think that would be a beautiful addition to this piece. You can add, um, grab some different color of paint pens here and add some holly coming out of here, which is what I was originally going to do with some berries. But I'm really loving the uh, black and white. So, I'm going to grab my snowflake stencil and a fingertip dauber. Now I'm going to use a, a small stencil brush. And we're going to stencil, oh, that wasn't quite dry. We're going to stencil some small um, snowflakes on here. I want to make sure that's dry. Now you want to try and avoid your um, your check. So if you are unsure if you're going to be able to do that or not, you can take a little piece of tape and tape right there. We're going to be actually doing white so we don't have to worry too much if we get it on on there so I'll do a couple you want to do a dry stencil brush load some in your stencil brush offload I want these to be light and subtle in the background so I don't want a whole lot of paint I'm definitely gonna have to go over my letters again And that one's that one's pretty bright but I'm going to try and make the other ones not so bright and I'm just going to do pieces of these snowflakes so we got a little piece of a snowflake there I'll go ahead and take this piece of tape off Let's put a snowflake up here. Okay, that looks pretty cute. We might put another tiny one here. And then we're going to come down here and add some down here. That one's kind of bent. You have to be careful when you're cleaning your delicate stencils because you can bend up your snowflakes pretty easy. Okay. 
I have not reloaded my stencil brush at all because I, I don't want these to be crazy bright. I'm going to put one behind the Noel word. And I'm just going to go right over the Noel. But then when I come in and do my second layer on Noel, this it should pop forward. So it already looks like it's popping forward, so that's good. I'm going to put one of these little bitty ones up here. I'm going to go back here and, and pick up a little bit of paint that's on my paper towel. And let's see if this one will do very well. It's a pretty thin one. I'm definitely going to have to get more paint for this one. Load my brush, offload it. And I'm going to tap this one. It's a very thin snowflake. Oh, that turned out cute. I like that. Let's put a little piece of one down here. And you can just put as many on here as you would like. And we need a little one over here. So we have some snowflakes coming around it. I feel like that spot right there in the center needs a snowflake. Pretty good here. And you can put some over your bow if you prefer that. And you can also add some bling to this. You know me and my bling. I'll probably add it to the word. So. Okay, what do you think? You think that's enough snowflakes on there? I'm thinking we got plenty. We don't want any really big empty spots on this. Oh, that was a lot of paint. I don't want that much paint, that's for sure. Okay, I think that's, that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to go over here, though, to these little places over here and add something. More paint. Because that did not show up at all. There we go. And we'll go over here to this one. Okay, that com completes it a little bit more. All right, so I want to go over my... Now, you can paint this in with a paintbrush. Completely fine to do that as well. I'm going to just go over everything one more time with this paint pen. Make sure it's dry or you'll just lift what you put on before. And then I'm going to add my bling it up. You know me. I better have my bling. Okay. 
can't stand to do it without the bling. A bling bling. I might just add a little highlight with this around these things and you can use this to brighten up all of your highlights anywhere you feel like you need it this is a really good tool for adding highlights if you feel a little bit uncomfortable adding them with a brush. So let's add just a little bit of highlight down there. Okay. I know it's black and white and you don't normally think of black and white for Christmas, but I really think this is so stinking cute. Okay, let's make sure our letters are dry, then we are going to bling those letters up. All right, I've got my Glamour Dust Ice Crystal. It's my favorite one to use. And I'm just going to put a coat or two over my letters. Now, if you are going to varnish this, if you varnish with a gloss varnish or a satin varnish, it should not take your glitter down. But if you varnish with a matte varnish which is what I plan to do um, you want to apply this after you varnish so I'm applying it before just to show you I'll just do one coat then I'll varnish it and apply a second coat when it dries but you can paint these letters in hand painted you do not have to. You can't see the bling right now because it's still wet. Didn't look like I got any through here. tilted it up in the light. I didn't see any. So my brush must have been a little dry. Okay. I'm not going to get that bling bling look. reflection on my computer screen keeps reflecting on it turning it blue so you can just barely see the bling on there but it's on there a couple of coats you know me three or four is, I'm happy with three or four as well I mean you don't need three or four but I say the more bling the better Especially when I'm painting something that has to do with Christmas. And like I said, you can make this a name tag and personalize it. And then it can become their ornament that they can put on their tree. And um, I might go ahead and use a satin varnish on it because I want my uh, metallic stuff to really sparkle. And it won't sparkle if. Um, if I use a satin or a flat and I, and I do want my ribbon to sparkle a little bit to, to look like satin ribbon we put the highlights on there to indicate that it's satin ribbon so I really want to uh, reinforce that but that is that ornament that we painted on top of a scrapbooking paper isn't that cool so the only parts of the scrap painting scrapbooking paper we see is this piece and this piece and you can be as creative as you want with this design and uh, however you make it um, I think you can have so much fun with it and do uh, the red checked scrapbooking let's see if I have one with red check on it 
yeah this one has red check so if you like the red buffalo check you can use the red uh, paper on here and uh, make a red buffalo check bow okay i've got another ornament that i want to paint up for you that's on scrapbooking paper as well so i'm going to get everything gathered for that one and we'll get started okay on this this um ornament i have applied a blue scrapbooking paper that looks like it's all crackled in the background let me zoom in here we're going to do some fun things to this ornament and the first thing that I want to do is uh, add some different texture to the background. And you can do that with stencils like I did on the other one. Um, like I did with this one where I stenciled on the snowflakes. Or you can use something else. And I'm going to use a stamp on this one. I really like this stamp. This is a... Stamp Pinna stamp. This is their vint Cling Vintage Note. And so I've put it on my uh, block here. So I'm going to take some uh, graphite and put some of this on my stamp. I'm going to use a makeup sponge to apply this on here. So I'm just going to pull a little bit of that paint onto my sponge. Makeup sponges are not absorbent. You can use a stencil brush to apply it on here or a paintbrush. Um, I like to use a makeup sponge. So I'm just going to uh, apply paint to the top part of this stencil here. And I know you're not going to be able to see it because the color I'm using is about the same color as the stencil itself. And it does not have to be full coverage here. You know, you want kind of a hit and miss kind of look anyway. Uh, kind of old and worn like the um, paper that I put on here. But I thought just adding another textural element on here would be fun. So I'm just going to randomly stamp on here. I'm not worried if it's if it gets on the hat. We're going to paint the hat in. And I'm going to try and work this corner without getting it on my ribbon because our ribbon is the um, is the background. So our ribbon will be the paper, or the hat band will be the paper, the scarf here will be the paper, and I'm going to see if I can remove these words off the scarf very, very lightly with a white eraser. This is still paper and you can erase all the way through that decoupage and uh, damage your paper underneath. I still want some right there, so I think I'm going to mask my... Um, bow here. Let's see if I can put some paint up in there. Just in that section. Okay, that worked out good. If I can do that here with the... I want a little bit more in there. Okay, so I'm going to try... Well, it doesn't really matter too much about the hat right here because we're going to be painting it in with gray. But you have to do it pretty much immediately when you get the, the paint in an area you don't want. When you're working on paper. So I think that gives it a fun little element in the background. So you'll want to take your, your stamp and go rinse it clean underneath the sink. And um, you'll be ready to go. I wanted to tell you also that you could use a stays on uh, ink to put your background on. I just didn't want my uh, stamping to be black, you know, bright black. So that's why I went with the charcoal color because that's the color we're going to be using in our design. And these uh, sponges, you can just lay them on their side to dry. I usually wait till they're dry so I don't get the paint on my scissors. And then I just clip off the dried in and continue to use this until there's nothing left of it. Okay, so let's um, work on some of the colors we're going to be putting on here. Now I want his hat to be graphite. 
So we'll base coat a couple of colors, uh, uh, layers of graphite in here. Now this should be a fairly fast ornament to paint up um, for a gift tag or you know just to give ornaments. If you do random acts of kindness, this is a, a super fast one to paint up. So we're going to paint in the hat with graphite, and you'll need a couple of coats. And the hat band is the paper, so we want to try and keep the hat band in a nice shape here. And just paint, I probably should go to a small round brush here, that might be a little bit easier to get into these places. And you'll need two coats of paint on here. And then if you need to transfer your lines back on to know, you know, what goes where, you can do that with some white graphite or some, um, just use a, a chalk pencil and put it in. Okay, so the, um, snowman itself we're going to paint him in a light gray to start with and that gives us somewhere to go so I'm going to take my graphite and some white and just mix it together and get a light gray out here and we'll paint him in with a coat of light gray to start with And then his scarf is also going to be the paper. This is where you just add the scrapbooking paper becomes part of your design. So you have less uh, work to do. Okay. Um, so I'm going to miss a spot here on the hat. I'm going to see if the hat is dry enough it's dry enough I can put a, another coat on here put a second coat on the hat real quick and I'll go down to my small round nice smooth coat on there okay and I need a second quick coat on the snowman itself just a light gray and that's even lighter than my first coat but that is going to be fine just as long as when we go to apply white on here we can see our white now I want to make sure I cover up this line out here this one right out here because I'm not sure how well it will erase off of here So I want to cover that up because the scarf is the paper. Okay. All right. So we're going to um, 
start working on our ribbon up here. I'm going to get a small uh, chisel brush. Size six, I think. So we want to shade our bow. And we're gonna do that with our graphite. So I'm just going to side load this small brush. With some graphite. And we wanna cre start creating our um, folds. So our little shadows in, in our ribbon where one ribbon lays next to another one. This is a very um, small amount of paint, so don't uh, get too much on your, your brush. This is ribbon. And then this ribbon comes out behind here. We'll shade where it comes up next to each knot on there. Or where each um, piece comes up to a knot. Put a little bit of shading along one of the edges, but we need to get everything else done in here first. Nice soft floats here. Don't don't let them get too dark. If you're heavy-handed at painting, then you might want to. Um, remove a little bit of the paint off of your brush and add a little bit of water before you start painting. We'll make sure we do the outside edges where it goes around the um, ornament itself. Do a little bit on our knot here. And then we kind of need to determine a little bit of a shadowy edge. So I am going to work a little bit of shadow along this edge and this edge. edge. I'm pretty much doing all of the right sides. These narrow pieces, keep them kind of tight in there. Be up on the toe of the brush. Don't let it get uh, too far over. to our ribbon as well. Ribbon tails. And then we'll do the bottoms of the part that comes across. Okay, so we've really got our ribbon defined right now. So let's go and do the ribbon on the hat band with the same graphite color and we'll do on each side of the hat band. I'm going to walk it in just a little bit and on this side. So you can use whatever kind of scrapbooking paper that you like, you know, Christmassy type scrapbooking paper. Um, I have several different light blues and grays and any of those will work just fine. So let's define our scarf here.
give it a little bit of a fold like there. We're using very small amounts of paint here. And then I'm going to shade down here on the bottom of this. I probably will shade around the entire ornament when I'm done. I'm going to give a little bit of shading right here. That's mostly going to be highlighted. Okay, I'm going to walk this one over just a little bit more. Okay, so that's some nice shading on our um, bow and hat band. I'm going to shade on the hat, and I'm going to do that with some lamp black. We'll be using lamp black for the eyes. And I'm just going to do all of his facial features in with black. I'm not going to... Um, make him a carrot nose or anything, but you could certainly do that. I'm just going to give him a, a coal nose. So we want to shade on the right sides. Now this is two different things right here. I'm going to go along chisel edge, tip my brush up, and just take the corner of that brush and drag it along where the rim of the hat is. And you can certainly go, I think I will, go down to that smaller chisel brush. And we want to put some in here inside. So we're starting to see some definition here. be doing some highlighting on here. I'm going to bring some of this along the top of the hat band. I want to make sure I don't get it on that band, so be careful there. And I think I'll put a little bit along the top of the hat. And just kind of need a little drop of water here. Work it in to the hat. Use your finger, kind of tap that out. This is just black that we're using here. Lamp black. Okay, we're going to be putting some highlight on this hat band here, so. Okay. Let's add a little bit uh, more darkening of this graphite on the scarf of the snowman. So I want it a little slightly darker. This is with graphite. Make sure you don't accidentally get into your... Okay, so that's the bottom edge of the scarf there, and that's the top edge of the scarf. And then up here on our ribbon, we can just darken a couple of places. Don't. Too much. We want it definitely darker here where they all come up to the knot. I'll try and zoom in just a little bit more and try and keep you on camera shot. I don't always do the best at staying on camera shot when I zoom way in.
And then just a couple of places, like maybe where one ribbon lays over another one. And we can just slightly darken. Small amounts of paint here. very soft. If you've got yours really dark the first time, you may not want to do this on the second round. Oops, see, got you off camera. Just a couple little dark, darkened places. We really want our ribbon to pop. So we don't want it to um, fade too far into the background. So let's put a little bit on the hat band again. Try and make this look like a satiny ribbon. And then this side we walked in a little bit. Okay. Let's add a little bit of white to our snowman now. Make sure I've got all the gray and black out of my brush. So I'm just going to side load a flat brush because I want to walk this over. Um, I don't have near enough paint or water on my brush here. Maybe just a tad too much that time. I want to come along the edge. Got a little bit too much water in my brush here. And then we're just going to walk over to the other side. I'm going to go around my scarf here. I'm going to wipe my brush out now and just kind of pull some of this paint over to the shadow side. We want this side to stay darker and this side to become the light side. So we'll be doing our white a couple of times here. And while we have our white, I'm going to take that small chisel brush and side load some white. Now white is notorious, notorious for fading down into the design. So we want to start adding a little bit of highlight on our scarf. We don't want to lose all that um, paper. I'm going to shade underneath his face, I think. Let's take some white and we'll put a little bit on our knot up here. And I'm going to highlight the back to back float. On my ribbon to give it some shine. I'm going to have to, um, now this is where you can really decide to erase your graphite lines or leave them as part of the design because I'm working on paper here and they can become part of the design here. section of ribbon that is open, we want to do this back-to-back -back float with Snow White using a small flat brush. A shorter bristle brush is going to do best in this situation. And it, it's going, the first time is going to fade in there, so just, you know, Expect that because that's just the way it generally works out. A little bit of 
water in my brush now. I want a little bit in this section, so if you need to go to a a small round that you can flatten out, you can do that. So see how we're developing a highlight on our ribbon here? And I think I'm going to go along this area right here with some highlight. And on the inside edges maybe, or the, the left sides that we didn't paint, we can put a little bit of this white for a highlight on here up on the tippy toe of the brush just kind of scoot a little bit along the edge tiptoe that brush, tiptoe it you've got water in there, you've loaded it for a float but you're just using the very tiptoe of that brush And then just lightly going along the edges. Not that edge, that edge shaded. here because this one is on top right here. We want to make sure we can tell what ribbon is on top and what ribbon isn't. And uh, it's going to fade down in there so it might be a subtle little look on the ribbon you know where you kind of outlined it. And then we can come back and brighten any place we need to brighten. And right here I want this one piece of ribbon to show on top here. This is just where you kind of look at your piece and determine where you might need just a, a slight little highlight to emphasize what is on top and what is not. Okay, and we can come back and repeat all of that. Let's move over to the hat band and put a float in the hat band just down the center. I'm going to go all the way from edge to edge. That's why I think a flat brush works much best with this technique because you want to go from the edge of the hat band to the edge of the hat band. Okay, we can put a little bit more on the scarf down here, brighten a little highlight on the scarf. I'm going to be shading around the whole entire piece, so that little highlight right there might be covered up. I want to go over the little knot again. And then this is where I will go back over all of my bright shine marks and get those to really pop. back floats here. Clean up your edge. Keep that water on that one side so you can clean up. It's going to help it 
to float a little bit better as well. This is a very small float here. My brush is loaded with water and a little bit of paint on the corner of the brush. But my brush is not dripping with water. We don't want dripping. We just want enough moisture in our brush so that we can move the paint a little bit. A little bit on the top of the knot. Okay, then take, I'm going to load for a float again, and then take that chisel edge and do a little bit of outlining. Kind of want our knot to be a little more prominent and then along. Um, that's a lot. Take the water edge and clean up where you need to. You're just creating the bright edge. And this is just, you know, the look, look of ribbon that is actually our paper, so you don't have to do tons of detail on this kind of stuff. You just want to make sure that you can tell what ribbon is on top of what. Toe of the brush. Probably have me off a camera shot. Okay, let's go back over to the hat band and put a second float on it. Wipe off some of that paint because I felt like I had a ginormous amount of paint on there. So we're looking pretty good here. I think the ribbon looks great. The hat band looks great. The scarf is looking good. I'm going to shade underneath the scarf real quick with the graphite. And then we'll finish on the face here. And that's with our white. I'm going to go back to my bigger brush. And white. A little bit more white. Ooh, way too much water. Let's take some of that out. need to repeat the um, shading on the hat and give the hat a little highlight. We're going to use some paint pens here in a minute and create a little bit of detail. Now if you wanted you could just paint your ribbon a real pretty Christmassy color, a red ribbon. So I'm going to darken the shading on the hat real quick. side. And I'm going to walk it out. And across the top just a little bit down to my small flat to do the rest of the hat. 
again with our lamp black. I'm going to do along these edges right here. Do a little bit above the hat band and we can do a little bit below it but we don't have to do a ton because we want to add a tiny bit of highlight. Oh, must have picked up some some gray there. I'll wipe my paint don't brush off because I got too much paint on it. I'm just doing the inside of that hat there. All right, let's do some highlighting on our hat. Now I want to use graphite, but we're basting with graphite. So I'm going to take some graphite and some white and create a little bit lighter gray here so we can highlight on our hat. Just up here, and then I'm just going to walk it in. Tap, tap, tap with my finger. Settle that down in there. We want a little bit right here and we can kind of walk it over. Let's do the hat, top of the hat. Smooth out that edge down there. We'll do a little bit down here as well. Inside the rim of the hat. Okay, and we want to repeat all of that. You want to make sure it's dry. And with such a small amount of paint, it shouldn't take too much for it to dry. So mix some graphite and white. It can be a, a little bit lighter this time. Wipe some of that paint off. And just kind of tap, tap, tap. Pat, pat, pat. We're just creating the bright spot in the highlight now. So we don't have to go over as far as we did. Oh, I forgot the inside of the hat. Right here. Just a little bit. And then... We need um, we need to fix the edge of the hat out here. It's a black. Okay, I got a little bit out of line there. Let's see if I can erase that. Alright, that's looking good. Let's add a little bit of shading on this side of the snowman. We're going to take the, the graphite and really work it into our brush with some water. And we're going to shade over here on this edge. Go around the scarf. Wipe my brush. It's all splayed out. I'm not really sure why it's all splayed out. Probably doesn't have enough moisture in it. Alright. Tap, tap, tap. I want that to be soft in there. Not really sure what that little circle thing is right there. It kind of bugs me. So let me redo that. Sure, if it's because my brush is all splayed out there, I'm gonna grab my mop brush, soften and smooth that out. We'll definitely need to darken right over in here where it's the the darkest shadow. But I want to put one more layer of white on the snowman. You can put as many layers of white on here as you would like. We need to shade underneath the hat, and then we can add his face, facial features on here. Do 
not know why my brush is spreading out like that. Okay, just over here I think I'm gonna... That might be just a little tad too dark. We don't want him to turn into a black, a dark gray snowman. Snow is white, so we need it to stay white. So let me brighten the top of his scarf right here where it's next to his... There, I think will help. And then I'm going to tuck just a little bit of graphite right here where there's a little bit of a triangle. Let's go underneath his hat band with this graphite. Too much water. Let me wipe it out and get a little bit more paint. Just a light little float right underneath the hat. Make sure all your layers are dry. Okay, so I'm going to grab some scrap paper. Um, because I have paint pens that I want to work with now. So we're going to add some uh, holly on the hat band and the eyes and everything with these paint pens. Now you can use a paintbrush and do it all detail if you would like to, but um, I'm going to keep it with using these paint pens. So they need to be shook up. And you can use any brand of paint pen that you like. This is a Posca paint pen. I want to make sure my paint's going to come out okay. And then um, we're just going to put an eye here, and an eye here, and a nose. Okay, I'm going to let that dry before I apply the mouth. And the mouth I'm going to put on with an Identa pen. You can use an Identa pen for this whole black area if you would like. I'm going to put some green. And that's really squirting out there. And the green is going to be for the holly. So you just want to give the a look, the illusion of holly. So I'm going to put one here, just three little holly leaves on his hat right there. Okay, this one is really runny, that let's see how the red is. Now when you first get them, you got to hold the tip down until the paint all runs down into the tip. Alright, I want three little berries on here. Three little berries on his hat. Okay, my eyes are not dry yet, so I can't highlight them. So, but I'm going to draw the mouth in. And so I'm just going to give him a a little smile and a little lip. And then we can just fill that in down there with this pen. Hopefully you were on camera for that. Probably not. And then we want to add a little bit of a highlight with some white. a little highlight in the eye so I'm going to put it where the dry area of the eyes are <laughs> and then my red is not dry but I'm going to see if I can drop a little dot of white and, nope. can't do it on the green here so let me take my brush and 
maybe just some white paint to give the leaves a little highlight. I'm not going to worry about shading on these or anything. Just a couple little dots of white with some paint. And you can see my, my white is spreading in my red berries because the red was not quite dry. So you definitely want that to be completely dry before you shade around the outside of it. We could we could shade around our bow to lift it off of the design a little bit, um, but I don't think I'm going to. I just want to shade around the outside edges, so I need to get his face dry. Okay, I think I've got it mostly dry, dry enough that I don't have to worry about smearing it. So I'm going to take my uh, brush loaded with side loaded with some graphite and I'm going to go around the outside edge of this and um, this is making more of it an old uh, rustic tile type of ornament and I like these light blues and grays on here I think it really gives that uh, illusion of a older ornament we're going to go around the entire thing with some graphite. You should have a little bit of water in your brush to make this paint move for you. And if you have any hard lines, try to smooth them out a little bit. I got one over here, but I really can't do anything about it now because the paint is dry. And it's on paper, so I want to make sure my corners are of my star is pretty dark. Okay, I think that is going to finish this guy out. Again, it was just a star ornament, scrapbooking paper that we used, and that's what our ribbon there, there, although you can't even see the color of it now, and here. So you could certainly paint your ribbon, your scarf, and your hat band, whatever color appeals to you, and um, just leave the background, the paper part. But um, I think it's always cute to incorporate the paper as best you can. Uh, as part of the design. So that is a couple of coats of, um, because I want it to look old, um, an old old world or old style of ornament, I am going to um, use soft touch varnish on it because that dries to a matte finish with no shine whatsoever so it looks how it looks now is how it's going to look when it's dry and I think that's a super cool look for an uh, antique style ornament so um, that is my star ornament with a snowman using scrapbook paper and stamps and paint pens Posca paint pens and these are the um, uh, fine tip, I believe. It's all written in Spanish. It's 0.15. One, one M, 0.15, I'm not sure. 0.15 it says over here, so, oh, there we go. 0.07, or 0 0.7 mm, so <laughs> that's what size the tip is. 0.7 mm. Okay, there we go. All right, thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, I want to try something on here. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to take some of that red paint right there and grab a small little dry, scruffy brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that paint and remove it from my brush. I want just a small amount left in my brush. I'm removing it on a dry paper towel. Just a small amount because that red is crazy super bright. Let's get a little glow on the cheeks here. See, and that's still to me a lot of paint. And 
and just feather it out. Don't let it be too awful bright. And that didn't work out too bad using the paint from the paint pen because it's just acrylic paint in these paint pans. So um, that worked out pretty good. I'm probably going to re highlight my white on there my berries little dot and you can just use your paintbrush and use white paint to do that but uh, I think that little bit of pink on the cheeks helps and you know if you want him to have eyebrows he can have eyebrows um, totally up to you but I think he's uh, Pretty cute little snowman. I'm going to call him done now. All right, on this ornament, I have a different kind of scrapbooking paper on here. It's a wood grain scrapbooking paper. I am going to paint a red bow on here. Now, the background color is a very good under color for red, but I have these big black lines that go through it, and I don't really want to see those when I paint my red on. So I'm going to base in my uh, bow with um, gray sky. Now gray sky should cover up that black pretty good. And gray sky is what I undercoat all of my red with anyway. Um, you can choose to use a green or an orange. Totally up to you. But um, I've always used a, a light to medium gray underneath my red. And I'm sure many of you that have watched my videos has heard this many times, but I used to do wall murals. And when I was using red, especially if red was like one of the main dominant colors in what I was painting, the only way to get that red, the true color of what I needed it to be, which is the true color that comes out of the bottle or the can, was to use a light gray or... Um, a light to medium gray underneath my red and it worked perfectly I would always get the red that I you know was hoping for that you know was the color that I either had purchased or mixed so you can choose to do whatever I'm not saying one way is better over another this is just the way that I have always done it for years so you do what you know works best for you if a green or an orange gives you the color that you're wanting then you can use those underneath I'm going to go all the way out and cover my graphite lines this gray and then we'll let it dry one coat should be enough but if your black line is really really dark you may have to come back with a second coat on here I'm just working on covering up my graphite lines now and I won't have to come back and erase them worry about damaging my paper so I changed the line here so I'll probably erase part of that line there okay so I want this to get dry Need a little bit more on that line right there because I really don't want to see these black lines coming through at all so if you have to put another layer just on that line go for it this will get dry and then I'm going to try a different red. I want this to be really a more country looking red bow because I am going to do some uh, buffalo check on it. So um, cad red is not one that I normally use for base coating in ribbon. But I am going to give it a shot and see if it's going to give me a color that I like. If not, I'm going to go with country red. So 
I'm going to try this red first just because it's a little bit different color. I feel like it's more country of a color. A more country color. <laughs> or I should say it that way. I still want to paint in each section on its own. And I have to add a little bit of water to this paint because it is really crazy thick. And two coats, if I'm going to stick with this color. This would normally be uh, one of my choices for a highlight color on red. So we'll see how this works out. So I'm just going to go and finish getting all of my base coats on. We don't need to see all of this on camera because it's just repetitive stuff just like I did the gray I'm painting in each individual element on its own so I can retain my lines if when you get done putting your two coats on you cannot see your lines uh, either put your pattern back on or use a uh, chalk pencil and mark where the sections and everything goes while my first coat of red is drying I decided I'm going to paint my topper on this one gold I normally do um, silver for my toppers. I'm going to base mine in with some moon yellow. And then I drew a line because I want this to look like it has a wire on the top of it here. And all of this negative space right here I'm going to paint black or graphite color, whatever uh, color that you have. It's just kind of dead open space there. And we have black in our design, so you can lighten it up with some uh, gray sky that we use to undercoat the I think just straight black is going to end up looking the best. And we'll just paint all that in. So that will require two coats as well. Everything will get two coats. So I'll go off camera, get all my second coats on, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've got this um, all painted here. my two coats so now I want to draw on my lines now again you can transfer it with um, your tracing uh, transfer paper your white but this is uh, my favorite chalk pencil and uh, it's actually a dressmaker's pencil but it comes with white pink and green lead disappears with water or paint that's what I love about it so when you buy one of these from my website it will come with all three colors of lead I have three of them that I keep loaded with individual co colors of the lead so that I can uh, use it on whatever project I'm using. I don't have to change the lead out. So I'm going to take my pink one here. And I won't have these probably for much longer because it's getting hard to get them. And um, recently the price for them has kind of skyrocketed. So I don't know how much longer I'll be selling this product. So if you want one of these pencils now is the time to get it so we want all of our and then our bow over here Oops. Like that. little boo-boo line there okay so um, I don't like the way this side looks Tell where I where I painted my okay that's good enough maybe except for that one has much more of a curve so let me fix it
still doesn't look close. Okay, got it back on there, how it's gonna look the best. So now we want to stencil with our buffalo check stencil. All right, so I, um, this is a buffalo check stencil that I sell on my website. And I'm just gonna lay it across here. Now this is where you want to really be aware of exactly where your bow is. I think I will tape it down. Because I don't really want it to move. So I'm just going to tape it over here. And I can put a little piece up here. Oops, the light went out. I'm not really sure. I must have bumped it. Okay, so uh, I'm using a 3 8 inch uh, Dynasty Stencil Pro brush. I love these stencil brushes. I sell the half inch size on my website. Um, my favorite stencil brushes. So you want a dry paper towel. I'm going to put some fresh black out. We're going to load our brush with black. And I'm not going to make this really bold, bright black. So I'm just, I just loaded a little bit on the end of my brush and I'm going to offload over here. Because I don't want a ton of paint on here. Straight up and down with my brush, soft circular motion. I will be applying this more than once, but I want my first layer to be subtle. I'm going to be very careful going right up to the edge of my ribbon there. I don't want to go out into the background. Grab a little bit more paint. Get this little piece down here. And I already went out of line right here. Although it doesn't matter right there because we're going to be adding some stuff underneath our bow. I'm going to try not to go out at the top. So just take your time. Use a smaller stencil brush um, if you can. I, I'm not sure that I would recommend a uh, makeup sponge for doing this because we have to be careful of our edges of our bow here. And you can certainly just paint your buffalo check on by hand. Get a nice. I'm going to lift this end up. I've got tape holding it here so I can see how dark it is. It's not quite dark enough for me. I'm going to go a little darker. So I'm going to go over it again. Oh, I keep hitting my on off switch on my light there. So I'm going to go over it again. A little bit more paint here. You just want to be aware of where your brush is, how much pressure you're giving to it, so that, you know, in places where you're getting close to the outside edge, you can just soften your pressure and just let the edge bristles of the brush go along there. You are in charge of the brush. Do not let the brush be in charge of you. take a peek. Well, that's much better. I like that. So I'm going to remove my stencil and like I said this is one that I saw on my website. This is a half inch buffalo check and I'm working on a one inch one so I can have two different sizes. But that's the one that I have currently. And I wanted to show you I keep a little jar here and this is one of those little um, scrubby things that suctions into the cup and on my stiffer brushes I don't use this on my my good brushes old brushes and stiff brushes that I really want to get the um, paint out of 
Okay, use it on those. I'd already rinsed this in my other basin, so it's not pulling out a lot of paint. But um, this is a very handy thing to have when you uh, do a lot of dry brushing with old brushes or stiff brushes to help get the paint out of the bristles there. Okay, so I see one place that I got paint, actually two places. So I'm going to take, this is my tri eraser. Let me move it in a little bit. I sell these on my website. Um, I dip the tip in water, tap my paper towel because I want it to just be slightly wet. And as long as I use gentle pressure and I do this while the paint is not cured, I can remove, I can erase away any boo-boos that I get on here. And remember, you're, you're working on paper, so you don't want to um, scrub too awful hard. I'm not going to worry too much about that one right there because I'm going to be putting some stuff underneath this bow right in the center. Okay? So there we go. We have our um, buffalo check on our bow. So now we are ready to start uh, shading on our bow. And let me grab a smaller angle brush somewhere. Okay, I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch angle brush here. And I want to start shading on my red. Now, I'm going to use Tuscan Red, which is normally a color that I base coat my bows with. So I'm going to use that for my first shading, and then I will mix a little bit of black in with it for my second shading. I'm going to try this. I don't even know how well it's going to work, because this is a pretty bright red, and it might not work at all for what I'm picturing. little bit of water here. Okay, let's go inside here. This is just darkening up the red a little bit. Start giving some shadows. Go inside here. side. Nice soft pressure when you're floating. We go around the center. We won't really see too much of this on that black square. And we're going to start developing our shape of our everything that pertains to our bow here. Outside edges. Here along this edge as well, and on this outer corner, and I might remove that from the center because we're going to be doing a maybe a shine mark down this, and I don't want a bunch of dark down in the center. So we'll just keep it over here in this lower corner on both sides. And for our knot in the center, um, I think I'll go on the bottom edge and the top edge. And we'll highlight on the other sides on the knot. Okay, so that's the first shading layer. While that's drying, let's go up and do a little bit of shading on our um, topper. Antique gold. Now I want the topper to um, 
have these lines in it. Okay, this will be coming over here, and then we'll have these lines on the topper, kind of like that. So we'll float with our angle brush here with antique gold. And I'll go on the right side of them. If I get it in my black up there, I'm not going to worry too much about it because I can come back and touch that up. Not a big deal. And we want to put some here. And I feel like it could use one more out here, although we'll be shading the sides out here, so that one will probably get completely covered up. We want to make sure we separate the wire part, and we'll go around the bottom edge or the inside edge of the wire. Okay. So this is dry enough down here. We can um, darken it. So I'm going to take my Tuscan Red and a little bit of my Lamp Black. Now you have to be careful. Black will take over a color so quickly. But we want this rich, like, cranberry color here. And we're going to go back over. shading points. And just a tiny bit more black in there. back over and redo this one. I didn't have quite enough black in my mix when I did that one. Go around the knot here. Around this knot. I want to take this color, I add just a tiny bit more black to it, Ooh, or a lot of black. If you get too much black on your brush, just go wipe your paintbrush off on your paper towel. You don't need to wash it. Just wipe it off and then grab more of the color that you do need. And uh, you'll still have plenty of paint in your brush. Some little crinkle lines in the fabric. Might, might not see too much of those as we move on. I'm going to erase my lines up here. If I haven't painted over them, I can erase them. I definitely have to touch up my black. Um, I want to give my shading down here time to dry, so I'm going to... Um, actually, I think I better shade along the outside edges here. This will all be dark out here. I'm going to put out a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to use that for a second layer on here. Really work it into my brush. Burnt umber is kind of transparent anyway, but we want to work it into our brush so that it's not um, I'm just going to go in the center of these little lines here, taking the water edge of my brush and smoothing those lines out. I don't want them to be too wide or too long. Okay, then we'll go up here. And a 
on the tippy toe here we'll go around the inside edge let that dry. Let's go back down to our bow and this time we're going to add more black. It's going to be really dark and rich. Really dark and rich. You still want to tell that's red paint, not uh, black paint. And then this is going to be our darkest, darkest shading color, which will keep more narrow. Don't uh, fill in every place that you went before. Go ahead and do our lines. I forgot to do this corner down here, so I'm going to do it this time. Make sure that your previous float is dry. here our lines. I'm just on the chisel edge of the brush. You can certainly use a detail brush here. A detail liner. Whatever you feel comfortable with, but this this brush makes a really this particular size anyway makes a really nice chisel edge on the brush. So now we're getting some lovely depth into that ribbon right there. Let's highlight on our topper while that dries. We're going to use white. We're going to start with white and a and moon yellow mix. Moon yellow was our base color. So I'm just going to dip into each one one time and blend them together and start our highlight here. Get a little bit of that moisture out of my brush. I don't want to go over my shade, my line that I made there, so if my float gets too wide, you can dry brush this as well. Okay, and then we're going to go along the top here. Outside edge. I want to go along this edge right here and this edge right here with a highlight. Bring this more forward. trying to just keep it on like this section, skip over the shade, this section, skip over that shaded and that way I'm not floating all the way across. I should have done that on the top as well. So I might go in here and take the water edge and remove a little bit of that. Actually I'll just erase it off of there. It's wet so I can do that. Be touching up our black, and we'll want to come back with white and brighten that. And I think I'm going to take my shading down all the way to the bottom, just on the corner of that brush, and I'll take it all the way to the top. I wanted to keep it more in the center, but that wasn't working out, so I'm going to come back with my gold here. Put my gold kind of beside that again. And that burnt umber just looks way too dark on there. So I'm going to go over it with the gold, antique gold. 
I don't like that bright, harsh line there. I'm still going to have to go over it again. Especially this one here. It's really bugging me. I think when I come back with my next highlight, I'm going to um, use a round brush. So let me clean this up where I got out past my topper here. Alright, let's start with some highlights on our bow here. So, um, we're going to take our Cad Red. And let me see if I can make a highlight color with Cad Red and white. It's going to make kind of a pink color. We'll see if that's going to be too pinky. Two Cad Red and one white. I think what we'll do is do an equal mix. That's too pink. One white, one cad red. Barely one cad red. Too much paint in my brush. Wipe it out. Grab a dot of water. I don't want anything super crazy bright yet. So it's got to have that little bit of red in it. This is really pretty washy color here. Kind of lost my shape over here. Let me fix it. Your knot can be round, it can be square, it can be crazy looking. Um, don't feel like you have to make it. Perfect. Let's go out here. Use your finger to soften stuff down. We don't have to have really hard lines here. And I really have such a small amount of paint in my brush. It's like a wash, so we don't want to get crazy bright too soon. A little bit on the outer edges out here. And here. And this is really all going to fade down in there. You can already see that has faded down in quite a bit. So um, it's going to fade down in there. We're going to come back with a, a little bit brighter highlight bring this out a little bit more water to darken our shading on all of this pretty sure so I'm gonna grab my round brush go up here to the topper and grab some white on my round brush and I'm just gonna drag this through the centers here and along the top a little side lope of white and come in here create a little bit of a C stroke 
get these separations on there. Are done. I'm going to touch up on my black here. Well, it's not completely done. I need to, and I probably could wait to do this black. Because I want to put some uh, gold metallic on here. I'm sure I'll probably get into my black again. So I won't worry about cleaning that up too much. I want to darken down here in my bow. Now, we're going to do straight black. I want you to be so careful with this black. I want you to really work it into your brush, and that's spreading over my bristles too far, so wipe out, rinse out just a little. And just work it in, make it a sheer color. Don't let it fill your brush. Since we're going so dark, we could probably eliminate the first shading and then just start out with the second one that, where we add a little bit of black. This is a sheer float. I'm going to get my dark color back on my knot here. And then, of course, I'll do my lines here again. It's best if you can pull towards yourself because you can get a much smoother stroke that way. Okay, and then don't forget the outside edges out here. I'm thinking I'm going to have to do the whole bottom of this right here. Okay. So really highlighting on red is one of the hardest things to do because you don't want to get it too bright too quick um, because it just it makes the design look um, I don't know not quite right so this is still that pink and white mix and I want to widen that a little back there A little bit more pink in it this time, it looks like. And then out here. And out here. 
Now if you want it to look like satin ribbon, you have to add a white, a really bright white highlight to it. So um, for a satin ribbon look, um, you will add bright white highlights in key places to make the ribbon look like it is satin ribbon. Okay, so if you want to do that, I'm going to switch over to a flat brush. Um, I'm going to go with a 10 chisel. I'm not sure I had this brush very clean, so I'm going to really let it soak up some water. Okay, so we're going to side load with white for a float, but we need to make sure our brush has plenty of water in it. That is the key to making those uh, soft floats. You want to be able to see through them. Okay, so you're going to go straight down the center, kind of shape follow your ribbon and walk it out. Flip over and do it side by side. This is side by side float. And walk it out a little bit. This is really the hardest thing for a lot of people to do. So we're gonna go need more water bright hard lines to begin with. I want this to really soften and fade down into the design. And if we have a lot of paint and not much water, it is not going to do that. And you can always take your mop brush if you feel like it's too bright and mop and that will remove some of that paint. That one's already dry so I can't mop it. I'm going to clean up if I got over there. We want to make the um, loop thing here look like it is satin as well. Shape follow. I'm going to mop that. I didn't quite get all the way to the bottom. So you need to make sure you go edge to edge. Do not not leave that undone. We're going to put a little bit of this in here. I'm going to mop that. I definitely don't want hard edges. So soften those edges back there. And if you notice, I don't start my reverse float directly next to that one. I start it away from it and move the paint in. So I don't have a huge ridge built up of paint. Okay, now before I put my uh, final highlight on here, I want to wash over this with a brighter red. I generally use a cherry red. So I'll put some of that out here. And I want um, thin paint here. So just we just want to wash a color. It's mostly water. Okay, this will brighten up the red and then we'll come in and do our brightest highlight. You can already tell the difference. It's just perking up that red just a little bit. And we want this to get completely dry. Alright, so while it is drying, 
we're going to take a, a wash of uh, Extreme Sheen Metallic or any gold metallic that you have. We'll do the same thing. We'll add some water to it and thin it down. I'm going to grab a round brush here and just pull a little bit of this paint out and create a wash of it. We want this to be pretty sheer because this is going over our colors and we don't want our uh, colors to uh, fade away. Maybe I should brighten that white highlight first. A little bit more brightness on that. So we want that to be dry and take our wash and we're going to wash over the whole thing. This should not remove our highlights. This is just going to give us some sparkle and shine on here. That metallic look, which you may not be able to see too well until it dries. but it needs to be a sheer wash and I'll let it dry. I might come back and do a second coat and I'll touch up my black inside there again. This is still wet so I've got to get it dry so I can put my final highlight on there. Okay, everything's dry. Starting to see a little bit of that metallic look on there. I will do it a second time though. Um, let's get our bright highlight on our white again on our ribbon. Again, you're using I know it's hard for you to see my palette because my palette is white, but you have a lot of water in your brush, but you're keeping the paint just on that one corner. It's like a wash of color on the corner toe of your brush. Go down one side all the way to the bottom, and then flip your brush over white paint against white paint, and I am going to mop that. Just a little bit. Mopping will remove paint, so if you get more on there than you want, you can use the mop. I don't have enough water. Blend that a little bit. Generally, I mop right down the center of where I put that float. Pick up both water and paint and blend them into your brush. Ooh, too much paint. And that was kind of draggy, so I know I need to get another drop of water. That was a rather large drop of water there. All the way to the bottom. Look down the center. And I did change my uh, shading on my knot. I originally had it on the top and bottom, but I switched it over here just by applying a coat of the shading over my highlight, and then I brought my highlight over here. Um, it was just a quick little brush of paint. I didn't worry too much about how it looked. I was just covering up the previous I want that to kind of fade away down there. That needs to be a little bit brighter, I think. A little bit more white. I feel like it was picking up that red wash that we put on there. And that can happen if you get your wash on there and it's, it's a, a lot of paint and it didn't get dry enough. You can pick up a little bit of that color because on these two areas back here I feel like I picked up a little bit of that 
that red on there. And then out here on the outer edges, I didn't do this the first time, but I really want some highlight out here. Goodness, I need a lot more water in my brush. But, you know, this this part of the ribbon's not seen a lot, so we can kind of let that settle in there a little bit more. Not be so bold on top. Because we're going to be shading around this entire thing when we're done. I still want to go back here and do more. That is not bright enough back there for me. And I want to put a little bit of a highlight, just tippy-toe up on the brush. That upper edge up there. A little bit more in the center here. I think it needs it needs to be a little wider. Have a shine. Okay, so it should look more like a satiny ribbon now. A little bit of a highlight here. And here, just in that little curve area. Okay, let's put another wash of our metallic up here on the top. Now you can put some glitter on your bow now if you want a more sparkly country look. This color of Extreme Sheen that I'm using is 24 karat gold, so I think that gives a nice little added touch to this. Now I want to paint some um, little pine needles coming down out of here. So I think I'm just going to do three pine needles. Uh, yeah, pine needles. I think what I was painting there for a minute. And I'm going to start my color out with uh, some leaf green. Um, it's my favorite color for pine needles. That and with uh, I'm using Hauser dark green. I probably said leaf green. <laughs> leaf green is my favorite green color. Uh, it's my favorite color in the deco art line, period. And um, Glamour Dust Ice Crystal is my favorite all time product. I can bling it up. I'm going to bling it up. So I want to take my small round with my um, Hauser dark green and establish where my um, pine needles are going to be. So this is just roughing in placement here. Okay, we'll make this a little bit more of a traditional type Christmas ornament. I'm going to try a brush that I haven't used before. <laughs> and uh, it is this... Um, what is this called? Wave brush. Uh, this is a size 8 by Dynasty. And I'm going to see if I can get some look of pine needles here. I'm thinning down my paint just a little bit to have a nice flow consistency, but I want uh, paint definitely to be on the end of the brush, not all up. I mean, I want it all up in it as well, but um, I think this is going to be a fast way to get our pine in here. 
And I want it to come over the bow a little bit. This is just our first layer. Don't stress out. And I'll pop over and do this one now. Just pulling from that center line down. Kind of flicking it. We'll just do some pine and a few berries, I think, in here. And then the center one, which is on top. And we'll bring it down a little bit more. So that's uh, pretty easy. And then we'll do our next color will be leaf green. And again, you can use a round brush. I'm going to use this uh, wave brush again. And put a second layer on here. My final layer, I probably will use a round brush. Remember, we want paint on this one. We want paint on the tips. You don't want to cover up all of your dark green. And it's okay if you can see through your pine needles. Not all pine needles are very dense. There's such a huge variety of pine needles that uh, different pines that, you know, however you pull and stroke them is how they're going. I mean, they're going to be just fine. There's got to be a pine tree out there somewhere with a little bit of look like you're, you're working on. All right, then the center one. Okay, so we got three pine needles working there. My last layer will be olive green, and it's my favorite light green for layering on top of pine. On top of any kind of leaves, really. Um, and with this one I'm going to use my small round brush and just pull some strokes. We don't need a ton of this color in here. You do want to thin the paint a little bit so it gives good flow off of your brush. And it's going to look crazy bright when you first put it on, but this will fade down in there. And if you feel like you've lost some of your darker green color, then you can Come back in with a few strokes of your darker green. I feel like it could use a little bit more of the darker green in here. And a few over here because that one goes over. So now we're really establishing how our pine grows and I'm going to come back with just a few strokes of that darker green maybe I need to thin it down a little bit not quite thin enough just a couple in here you can also add some red strokes or some of that uh, antique gold antique gold would be pretty in here bring some of those colors down. I think I will add a few maybe red and antique gold. So I'm going to go into my country red and I want to thin some of that down and just put a few strokes in here. Not a lot. Be very sparing with this. And then the antique gold, we can do the same. And you can come back in with your bright green ones and add just a few brighter green ones on there really give your pine needles some character but remember you're just doing a little bit don't um, get carried away and fill in you don't want to cover up all that beautiful layering that you've done and we're going to come in here and separate these a little bit before we add our berries on here 
We want to put our uh, pine, our stem, back in here. And I'm not going to go with the straight dark green. I'm going to get some burnt umber. Some of my burnt umber here. And some green. And that's what I'm going to use for my stem. So it's going to be this kind of brownish green color. And we'll just pull the stem all the way down the center. And we can put a little some of pine have that little thing on the end of them. I don't know what it is, but we can do that on ours. So we've got our pine in there. Now we want to separate our pine. So we're going to take our Hauser dark green we might take a little bit of that burnt umber mixed in with it, kind of dirty up that green. We want to make a, a shadow color so we know that this one in the center is on top of everything. So I'm going to shade next to it and try and bring that, um, this one forward. So I'm just going to find the edge and just kind of wiggle it to create the edge of that pine. So now we've got a little bit of a shadow there. And we want to do the same thing over here. Just give it a wiggle. Bring it up there. I'm going to have to do this a couple of times because you can add a little bit of black in there which might help create a little bit more of a shadowy black green color. one. I was going to put this color right here where it goes underneath the knot. And that's going to push that a little bit more behind the bow. Now you don't have to have these coming up over the bow. Everything can be behind. It doesn't have to, to be on top. And I'm going to put a little bit of darkening right there. Okay, so we have established our pine needles now. We want to add some berries on here. Now, you can paint in some uh, circle berries. And I'm going to use Tuscan Red, I think, so I can have my berries be a different, different color than my um, bow. Um, but you can also just um, use a dotting tool or the end of a paintbrush and put them in. When you do that, they, they go in a little bit thicker, so um, you have to let them dry before you can do anything else to them. So for me, it's just faster to paint a few berries in with a paintbrush. And I'll put one up here. That's an odd number. I like an odd number, but I think I'm going to add two more because I feel like down here needs a couple of berries. Okay. Your choice. Do not feel like you have to add this many berries. I'm going to take my black and my green with that dark green color. And while these are wet, you can do it after they dry. I'm going to go around on one side, the bottom sides of the berries. And give them a little bit of a shadow. I want to go right up next to the berry. Use a small brush. This brush is probably a little bit bigger than I need for this. But we don't want our berries to look like they're just floating on top. So we got to give them a little bit of a shadow. And... Um, to settle them in. Okay, I'm going to put a second coat on my red so they can really pop. This uh, Tuscan red is such a beautiful red. And this is more a traditional design with the red and the green and the gold. 
and uh, definitely a more country style. Okay, so now I want to take, I'm going to do this while the paint is wet. Um, it's not going to be super wet for all of them, but I want to put the cad orange, or not cad orange, cad red on the light side, which is going to be the upper sides of all of these. Just do a little stroke. Do it while it's wet if you can because that's going to blend it down into uh, the, the Tuscan Red just a little bit. And if you can only do a couple at a time and then paint the next ones, then you can certainly do it that way. Okay, I'm going to want to repeat that because I know that's not going to be near bright enough for me. So I need to get these dry. Okay, I think they're dry enough to put a second quick little, and you could add a little tiny bit of white. Ooh, just a teeny tiny little bit if you want a little bit brighter. We're going to add a white dot in here. And you can do, go down to a detail liner. I'm just using a small round. I think I need to come back with a little bit of my Tuscan Red at the bottoms down here. Just tap some in. And then we'll do a little bright white highlight. Okay, this one I will do a detail liner. Just a white dot, little tiny dot. Whatever is your favorite liner. You don't have to do them all, you can miss a couple. I did them all, but you don't have to. And now we just need to shade around the outside edge with some soft float of black. Work that into your brush with some water. You don't want the paint going all the way across, so if it's all the way across, wash your brush out and reload it. With water in your brush, it can make the paint move all the way out to the out the outer edges of the bristles, and we don't want that. And I'm going to mop out here. I don't want any hard lines out here. Remember, this is paper, so it's not going to come off of it as easily. Soft, soft black. Not soft black the color, just a soft wash of lamp black. I mean, very tiny little bitty bit of paint in your brush. I want to go around up here. So I'm going to wipe my brush off. Give it a little bit of stuff going on up there. And you can let this dry and do this as many times as you want to get the outer edges as dark as you would like. But I think that makes a really adorable little country ornament. It requires a little bit more work than the other two that we did because um, it has a lot more colors going on in it. So these are the three that we did and I think they turned out really, really cute. Move my paints out of the way here. So we got the black and white love 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 this one we got the red the more traditional country style uh, ornament i still need to touch up my black in there and then we have this adorable little snowman so 
options galore on using scrapbook paper with your ornaments. I have so many over here. Let me bring them over. I have so many ornaments over here I've already prepared with different scrapbooking paper. Look at this one. I love this. These are scrapbooking papers I've had forever. So um, except for this one, this one's a pretty current one and this one, all three of these are pretty current. Actually, I, I just got these two the other day and I'm on October 15th, 2020. So these two are pretty current and this one I haven't had very long, but whether they have it or not, they rotate out the newspaper print you know, and uh, sometimes it might just be black and white. It could be a cream color print. Um, any kind of print is really uh, good. And then this one here they have uh, quite frequently at Hobby Lobby. I get all my papers at Hobby Lobby. I have in the past gotten a few at, at um, Michael's, but the majority of my papers come from Hobby Lobby. So uh, this one may have come from Michael's. I, I don't really remember because I've had that one for so many years and I just came across a little piece of it that would fit on this ornament and I thought, oh, that's so cute. Maybe a Santa on this one. I haven't decided yet. And um, But I've got several ready and made up, uh, even this great big ornament. Um, these are all ornaments that I sell on my website, ornament shapes that I sell on my website. But uh, see how fun scrapbooking paper, you have a ready-made background or a ready-made area that you can incorporate a design on. So this was a lot of fun for me. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, video of using scrapbooking paper and creating three ornaments using the paper as part of the design. So uh, this one has the paper as part of the background. This one has the paper as the bow, although the whole thing was covered with this paper, just the bow. And then this one, the background is this ribbon, the bow, or the ribbon on the hat, and the scarf. So um, I think this turned out super, they all turned out super cute, and I hope that you have enjoyed painting these with me. If you like my video and have enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Please like and share my videos. When you share my videos, my YouTube channel can grow more and I can bring more of this content to you. So I appreciate you all. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.